Hey guys, how are we doing? Starting another Python video tutorial, I'm going to make a floor caster in Pygame. But what is a floor caster? The idea is related to ray casting, but instead of drawing walls, we draw only the floor. If you want, you can also draw the ceiling. It is the same thing, but upside down. First of all, I will create the Pygame base here. I will import for now Pygame and NumPy, which I will use to do the calculations. Pygame needs to be initialized with the Pygame init function. And then we can configure the window. In this case, I chose the resolution of 800 by 600 pixels. To create the game loop, I will set a running variable. As long as it is true, the game is running. And for it to not to stay running forever, I need to create a condition that stops it. For now, it will be only the event of clicking the close button, which is the Pygame quit. To see if everything is working right, I will create a random frame with NumPy. It will have the resolution of 80 by 60 pixels with 3 RGB color channels. I like to work with frames as matrices because it's easier to manipulate each pixel and make some optimizations later. And usually I work with values from 0 to 1 for colors because I think this way it's easier to think about the color intensities. After that I have to transform this frame into a Pygame surface to be able to display it on the screen. We do this with the make surface function, multiplying the frame by 255 to bring it to the standard color scale with values from 0 to 255. As the frame resolution is much smaller than the window resolution, I use the scale function to bring it to the right size. Now I pass the frame to the screen buffer at the 0, 0 position, the top left corner of the window, using the blit function. The frame will not yet appear on the window itself. For that we have to update the screen with the update function. Before running it, I will put a pygame quit outside the game loop to close the pygame properly. I usually like to put the main part of the code inside a main function and the support functions I put down to better organize it. So now we have the basis of the Pi game and can start with the floor casting. First I will define some parameters. The horizontal resolution and half of the vertical resolution and a modifier, which is just a relation between the horizontal resolution and the 60 degrees field of view. I also need to define a starting X and Y position and a rotation for the player or the camera. And I will put the frame outside the game loop. The same way it was done in the ray casting, I will pass through all the columns in the screen. Inside the loop I will calculate the angle that represents the direction of each column in the frame and calculate the sine and cosine of this angle. Now differently from the ray casting, where we used to create a ray that traveled until it reached a wall, here we don't need anything like that. I will go through all the lines in the bottom half of the screen and calculate the distance from that point to the player. And I will consider this distance as being inversely proportional to the increment of the lines on the screen. So the closest line gets a distance equal to 1, and the furthest line in the middle of the screen tends to a very large value that depends on the vertical resolution. Very well, with this distance n, we can calculate the x and y position of each pixel using the previously calculated sine and cosine. With this position we can define the color of the pixel. To start with, I will make a checkerboard pattern here. Whenever the integer part of the double of x is equal to the integer part of the double of y, I will paint the pixel black, otherwise I will paint it white. I just forgot to adjust the frame resolution here. And I got it upside down, no problem. I just need to change the frame coordinate to start filling from the bottom to the top. Before continuing, I will make a function for the player's movement. I will also create a clock here to make the movement time dependent later. And now create the function. If I press the left arrow key or the A key, the camera will turn to the left, changing the rotation angle. Same thing but only in the other way around to the right with the right arrow or the letter D. 
To go forward, I press the W key or the up arrow key and add a value multiplied by the cosine of the rotation angle to the X coordinate and sine to the Y coordinate. You can see that there is some distortion in the image. It looks like I'm using a fish eye lens. To correct this, I need to divide the distance n by the cosine of the difference between the current column angle and the central angle. And now everything is supposed to look straight. And so we can start to give the game a little more texture. I will start with the sky. For the sky I made an image file of 300 by 100 pixels where each column represents a degree on the field of view of the player. After loading the image, I transform it to have the same vertical resolution as my frame and transform it into a numpy array. After that I go through each column before doing the calculations of each pixel and I will pull the corresponding column from the sky texture. Now for the ground, I will also load an image with the texture and transform it into a NumPy array. And now instead of filling with the checkerboard pattern, I will calculate the texture coordinates based on the non-integer part of X and Y coordinates. I just need to make a transformation here and bring it to the integer range between 0 and 99, since the texture has a size of 100 by 100 pixels. Now I will also add a shading factor according to the distance to the camera, because the whole floor with the same brightness seems a bit strange. I will make the farther parts darker. I also need to make an adjustment here when it comes to getting the coordinates of the sky and the ground as to not exceed the maximum indexes. Then I decided to change the floor texture for the texture from the Super Mario Kart map, since the floor casting reminds me a lot of the Super Nintendo's Mode 7. I just need to adjust the texture scale since its size is very different. And finally I will make that speed adjustment in the movement using the clock. This is so that the speed is independent of the frame rate. Talking about frame rate, I will display it in the window title. As you can see, for this resolution, I can get a frame rate of 12 frames per second. But the code is badly optimized. If you look at it, there's a lot of repetitive stuff here. We could take advantage of NumPy's arrays, for example, calculating each column at once instead of iterating over each pixel. With this, the frame rate increases to about 80 to 90 FPS for the same resolution. But programming with arrays is way more difficult and the mind boggles. But there is an easier and better way, using number. To use number, I will first create a function to put all the frame calculation. I will simply copy everything I have here in the main function and throw it inside it. Just remember to pass all the parameters it needs. Just remember to pass all the parameters it needs. Then I will just make a quick test to see if everything is still working alright. And now just import ngit from number and decorate the function with it. It freezes a bit in the beginning when it's compiling the code, but look at that. Easy like this, we go to about 150 frames per second, more than 10 times faster. From this floor casting base, we can develop several things like racing games, RPGs, or even first person shooting games. In the next video, I want to revisit ray casting using Pygame and check it out. Here we have the floor already done. Now all we have to do is to raise the walls. I also want to explore the use of sprites, which I don't really know how to do yet. But I think we can come up with some pretty interesting stuff here. Also please leave suggestions on what you'd like me to do here in the comments. But I will stop here in this video. I will leave the code in my github. And for those that are curious, 
I will put there the version using NumPy arrays, which I spent several hours to figure out. And if you want to follow what may arise from now on, subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching and I see you next time. Thank you.